Hi guys and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now this is the first video of 2025, so happy new year to you all. So I recently got this by the designer of Radio Ham with the call sign of G1LRO. Now in the past I've showed another product designed and made by the same person and that was the Universal Radio Controller. Go and check that video if you've not seen it before. But this is the AllScan UCI 120 and it's a professional grade yet low cost USB communications interface that can be used with a host of PTT applications. Now the most popular would be AllStar and that is what I'll show you later in the video. Of course, it could also be used with Echolink, but I think AllStar is now the world's favorite when it comes to voice over IP and ham radio. Now when using this AllScan device, it can give you a real sense of using an actual radio and while some of you are against any form of voice over IP, well, a lot of the main all-star networks like Hubnet or Freestar are also connected to physical repeaters and RF links around the world. So you still need a license and call sign to use this with all-star, assuming that you don't have a private network. As you've probably gathered already from looking at the front panel, we have a microphone socket, which is wired as an eight pin mic socket. Now this is compatible with Kenwood, and Elinco microphones. Now I'll show you a cheap mic that is fully compatible in a moment. There's also five status LEDs and a volume control. Now the red mic LED is definitely useful. This is an audio clip indicator and it ensures that you're not overdriving the outgoing audio. Now on the rear, there's a 3.5 millimeter line out socket, which can also be used as an external mic input. There's an adjustable mic gain with a range of minus 30 dB to 0 dB. And then there's a three-way mic boost switch, which can apply a boost of either 10 or 20 dB. There's also an insert IO, which incidentally, if we look at the block diagram, we can see this insert goes between the inbuilt mic preamp and the bandpass filter. I guess this could be useful if you want to insert an effects rack of some kind. Next to this, we have a 3.5 millimeter socket, which is a speaker output. Now this is capable of outputting 2.5 watts of audio power from an audio amplifier. We then have a USB-C socket, which is used to power and communicate with the AllScan device from a host computer. Now, as mentioned earlier, we can use the AllScan with AllStar, HamVoip, Echolink, or any PTT application, but this device is supported on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, so whatever flavor of operating system you like, this will actually work with it. Now the microphone that I will use for this demonstration will be an Elinco EMS 57. Now these are extremely cheap from the likes of eBay, Amazon, or even your local friendly ham radio emporium. Bass microphones or even studio mics are also supported. So in theory and practice, you can create some amazing sounding audio, depending on what you're using as a microphone. Now I'll leave a link down in the comments to another video where another YouTuber is demonstrating lots of different microphones with this AllScan device. Now one of the easiest single board computers to use would be a Raspberry Pi, especially for the likes of AllStar. And here I have a Pi 5, but clearly all of the other models of Pi are supported. Just check the AllStar image before you download it. Now you will only need one USB cable to go between the Pi and the AllScan device like this. Plug in a microphone and a power supply and you're good to go. If you're not gonna run the AllScan audio output via the line out to an amplifier or something else, then you will need an extension speaker. Something like this would do fine. We still need to image an SD card with AllStar and connect the Pi to an internet connection. Now something that I've not used before is AllStar 3 or ASL version three. It's had a major upgrade, and in this video, we're gonna install it onto an SD card and then configure it to work with the AllScan device. Now, this might be a full ASL3 installation video as there's plenty of those already on YouTube, but I will run through the steps briefly. But one cool thing to show you first is that there's also a dedicated AllScan dashboard available, which would replace Ormon or Supermon. Allmon and Supermon are the default web-based dashboards that get installed that you use to control your all-star node. Now the all-scan dashboard not only looks good with its dark themed enabled, but it also has some rather useful features. At the top, it shows the connected nodes 
And below, there's a little list of favorites, which you can click on and click connect. Now, this saves you having to remember your favorites nodes, node numbers that you like to connect to. Now, adding new favorites is super simple. You just enter the node number here and then press the add favorites button. You will then see your new favorite has been added along with the node details, which is automatically filled in. Now, the column on the far left has three color indicators. Red indicates the node has been keyed or was recently keyed, i.e. transmitting audio. The brighter shades indicate a higher percentage of time keyed over the past few minutes. Medium green means the node's active, web transceiver is enabled, or may be more likely to accept connections. Dark green means the node is active, registered, and reporting to the All-Star Link network. Now, the name, description, and location columns are pretty obvious, but the furthest right column need a little explaining. The RX percentage column is the remote node's reported TX time divided by its uptime. Now, this provides a general indication of how busy that node tends to be. And lastly, the LC or L count column, the reported number of connected links, that's user nodes, hubs, bridges, or any other link. Now, all of that information is actually updated in real time and periodically, meaning at a quick glance, you can see which of the, your favorite nodes or hubs have been active recently or how many people are connected. Now, down the bottom of the page, there's also some useful information. First, we have a real time log window, which shows any disconnects and connects to other nodes. Now, this also includes other information about settings which have previously been changed. Below this, you'll find some information regarding the CPU temperature of the host computer, which is running All-Star. Now, definitely a quick and easy way to tell if you need to add more calling or move the node to a cooler location. Now, if I just quickly connect to the Parrot node, which replays your voice back to you, this is what mine sounds like with the EMS 57 microphone. This is uh, M0 DQW, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, just testing audio. This is M0 DQW, testing audio with the all scan, all scan device. M0 DQW, over. Playback. This is uh, M0 DQW, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, just testing audio. This is M0 DQW, testing audio with the all scan. All scan device. M0 DQW over. So how do we get all this working? Well, first you need to go to the All Star Link website, download the image for the device that you're using. And in this example, I'll be using a Pi 5. Use the Raspberry Pi Imager software, which also lets you can configure a Wi-Fi connection and implement a username and password before writing that ASL3 image to the SD card. Once it's imaged, pop the SD card into the Pi connect all the cables and microphones and speakers, and then just power it on. Now from a browser on a computer, which is on the same network, you can then type the Pi's host name, followed by .local. But the host name would have been set when you image the SD card. Once you're logged into the web admin portal, you'll need to go down to the terminal and run the command sudo space ASL menu. Now we need to go through the node configuration, select node settings, and then all star node setup. Before entering the node details, you would have needed to register an All-Star node on the All-Star Link website. And once that's registered, you would have also been provided with a node number and a password. So just make sure to have those to hand. Now it's just a case of simply following the on-screen instructions to get the node set up. And there are some settings which you may have to refer to the AllScan documentation, which is on their website like this. It's possible it's different for every device, so please check there first to complete the installation. Any changes that you make, a node reboot will be required in most cases. Now the default dashboard is Allmon 3, which comes installed as part of ASL3, but the AllScan dashboard that I showed you earlier is much nicer in my opinion. Now to install the AllScan dashboard, you will need to enter a few commands into the terminal window which is via that admin portal on the node itself. Now, these commands are listed on the AllScan documentation. But once AllScan dashboard is installed, you'll be able to configure a user which can log in as an admin and then completely control the node using the account via the AllScan dashboard. As mentioned earlier, controlling the node via the AllScan dashboard is as simple as clicking on a favorite node number and click connect. 
or just manually entering the node number and pressing the connect button. As most hubs or networks of nodes cater for all types of different access, whether it's via another analog repeater or a DMR repeater, maybe even a fusion hotspot or a D-star repeater, modulation clarity may change due to transcoding. That's converting from digital to analog, for example, and back again. But analog audio will always sound the best, especially if they're using something like the AllScan interface as that is an analog audio direct into the network. No, I just got text messages saying that Dave's the one talking to him, and uh, I said, uh-oh. You're all being my returning. Quite a bit of a squelch tail on there. Uh, yeah, I uh, hope you unbamboozled uh, Kevin. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, I, don't, I've, I think I've already planned where my VHF and, and four-meter antennas will be. Now, for those of you that are interested to see what's inside this AllScan UCI120 interface box, well, here it is. This is the main PCB, and you can see there are some connections on the board. There's some pins with some writing which says exactly what it's for. There's also some dip switches that you can change, and there's also a couple of potentiometers, which I probably would say to leave alone. But refer to the documentation of what all these do before you start playing with it. Everything is well documented on the AllScan website. And as I said earlier, I'll leave a link below to all of this information. I'll also leave a link to where you can buy it from, which currently stands that there's actually a few different places. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video.